In this video, we are talking about the basics of acids and bases, the fundamentals. So first of all, what is an acid and what is a base? We have several definitions. Uh, the one we're going to use as a practical matter here is called the bronsted lowry definition. Um, and under the bronsted lowry definition of an acid, an acid is something that donates a proton. Okay, so what do we mean by a proton? It just means we write that as H+. Plus. It's just a hydrogen atom without its electrons. So it's just a proton. That's a positive charge. And so it's something that donates a proton, gives it away. A base, under this definition, accepts a proton. It's a proton acceptor. So for example, when we put hydrochloric acid in water, what happens is, okay, so the proton, the acid, we call this one the acidic proton, the hydrogen that's in front that makes it an acid. And so in this picture here, there would be the, the plus, right? And so hydrochloric acid donates or gives away this proton, this H plus, to water. Water accepts it. It ends up that the oxygen atom, the blue circle here would be the oxygen atom for water, accepts that proton. And what we have over here after the acid donates its proton is just the chloride ion that's left over and something called the hydronium ion, H3O+. You see here, the H plus has a positive charge. And, and, and there's a negative one charge on the chloride. So here, hydrochloric acid, there's no charge. And there's no charge on water. But when this proton is donated to the water molecule, now it carries a positive charge with it. So it gives the hydronium ion a positive one charge. And because we took the positive charge away from hydrochloric acid, the chloride ion that's left behind has a negative one charge. So the acid is the proton donor, the one that's given the H plus away. And the base is the proton acceptor, the one that's accepting the proton, gaining, it, gaining the H plus. Now we have what are called conjugate acids and conjugate bases. Whenever there's an acid, when it acts as an acid, it makes what's called the conjugate base. And when, whenever something is being a base, after it's done that, it's, it, it's formed into what's called the conjugate acid. So let's look at that same reaction hydrochloric acid in water. So hydrochloric acid donates the proton to water. And when it does, what's left behind is its conjugate base. So the acid, the acid and the base are always on the left side of the arrow. The conjugate acid and the conjugate base are always on the right side of the arrow. So here, after hydrochloric acid donates its proton, what's left, the chloride ion, is the conjugate base of the acid. So they're, they're a pair, the acid and its conjugate base. Likewise, the base and its conjugate acid are a pair. So the base here is water. After it accepts the proton, it forms a hydronium ion. The hydronium ion is the conjugate acid of water. So this is a pair here too. The base and its conjugate acid, the acid and its conjugate base. So it's real easy, okay? Sometimes you're asked to just say what the conjugate base or what the conjugate acid is of a compound. If you're asked for the conjugate base, all you have to do, and this is exactly what you do, you remove an H plus and see what's left. So let's see sulfuric acid, H2SO4. We want to know what the conjugate base is. Well, we take one of the hydrogens in front off, the acidic hydrogens, and when we take a H plus away, because this sulfuric acid overall has no charge, if we take a positive charge away, we leave behind a negative charge. And if we take one of these H's away, we have just one left. So we have hydrogen sulfate, or bisulfate, HSO4 minus. Do you guys see what happened there? We took an H plus away. So we took one of the H's away. So instead of two, now there's one. And we have to look at the charge too. Because we took away a positive charge, we have a negative one left behind. Now. If we were asked for the conjugate acid of water, to find the conjugate acid of something, all you do is add a proton. So here water okay, has no charge if, and has two hydrogens. If we add a proton or add an H+, plus, now it has three protons, so there's just a three there, and it gained a positive charge, so now it has a positive charge. So the conjugate acid of water is hydronium. The conjugate base of sulfuric acid is hydrogen sulfate. So we have what are called strong acids, strong bases, and weak acids and weak bases. So let's look at these real quickly. A strong acid is something, uh, an acid whose acidic protons all come off in water, all of them. So the picture looks something like this. We have 
So if we have our generic acid, a lot of times, we, if we don't want to say specifically what the acid is, we'll write it as HA. So this is, this is the acidic proton here, the H. And when we put it into water, all of these protons come off. And all we have left at that point are, is the conjugate base, the A minus, and hydronium ions. There's probably some water molecules in there, too. So this is the, what, what it looks like. This is what the picture looks like for a strong acid. There is no, um, there's no acid molecules left. They've all been converted into their conjugate base. So the A minus, no HA, that's the point. There's some hydronium, there's, probably, there's some water molecules too, which I didn't show. And there's the conjugate base, the A minus. Now, if we have a weak acid, all the acidic protons do not come off. Some do, and there's an equilibrium, remember that? In other words, this is this dynamic equilibrium, the double arrow, right? It's going back and forth. So when we put a weak acid into water, some of the protons come off, but not all, and we, they go back and forth. Some of them come off, some of them go back on. And so what we would have in a solution of weak acid, we'd, ha we'd have some of the acid still form, the HA, some of the conjugate base, the A minus, some hydroniums, okay, and of course some waters. A strong base, all you really need to know about strong bases at this point is that they, can, they are made up of a metal cation and the hydroxide ion. And specifically, these are the only strong bases that, that you'll see, and so you should know what they are. It's, and it's real easy because if you look at the periodic table, the alkali metals, sodium, potassium, and rubidium with hydroxide, so sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and rubidium hydroxide are strong bases. And in the alkaline earth metals, the second column of the periodic table, calcium, strontium, and barium hydroxides are also strong bases. So when we put, say, for example, potassium hydroxide into water, AQ, remember, means aqueous, so it's dissolved in water, it totally dissociates in potassium, into potassium ions and hydroxide ions. Now, a weak base, we're not going to really have to worry about too much here, but it makes hydroxide when, when you put it into water. But there's an equilibrium, so not all the molecules that start out as a base end up being in the conjugate acid. Ammonia is a good example of a weak base. When you put ammonia into water, some of the ammonia molecules accept protons from water. Water donates protons. And when you put an extra H plus onto NH3, you get NH4 plus, which is called the ammonium, ammonium ion. And when you take an H plus away from water, you're left behind with the hydroxide ion. That's really all you need to know at this point about weak bases.